What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Vocab Malone. You are rocking with Street Apologist Live. We always start out with those crazy lights just to show you what it really looks like behind the scene. But now let me switch over so we look mildly professional. Street Apologist Live in the house. My name is Vocab Malone, Christian Urban Apologetics. And we make it fun and we make it feisty. We're making apologetics fun again as if it was ever fun in the per- first place. It's all good. Grab this link and share it. That's right, I'm talking to you. Grab this link and share it. If you're watching live, you better grab this link and share it. If you're watching afterwards, why don't you grab this link and share it as well? We have 19 people watching already, and guess how many likes we have? 19. You guys are amazing. That means every person watching has hit the thumbs up button. Let's continue that battle for 1,000 up in here on Street Apologist. And today, oh yeah, I always like to tell you guys the day, right? That's right. People ask for that. They want to know what the heck when we're doing stuff. Uh, it's February 3rd, so that's 2-3-19, February 3rd, 2019. It's about 8.48 Phoenix, Arizona time, and we are rocking with y'all wherever you are in the world. And you know we do urban apologetics here at Street Apologist, but do you know the first people I really ever heard do urban apologetics, can I be honest with you, it was the f- two men I'm going to be interviewing tonight. This is not a lie, this is not a joke. I had seen apologetics, but uh, not the disc, but apologist usually equals middle-aged white guy. But then I saw some guys rapping doing apologetics. They called it hip apologetics. That was a number of years ago, and guess what? They have not stopped. Hazakim, messianic Christian hip-hop group with the lyrics, with the beats, that does apologetics as well. They cover all varieties of apologetics. And in their latest album, which literally just came out two, three days ago, you got to get it right now. You got to get it. Someone drop that link in the live chat. It is called Origins. And as you could guess, it is about origins. To know where you're supposed to go, you got to know where you came from. This album is chock full of intelligent design, science, creation. It is like a modern day How Great Thou Art, 14 tracks over, whatever the number is. Anyways, with all of that being said, I'm going to turn up the volume, and now I'm going to welcome to this very special (coughs) edition. This is the first exclusive interview for Hazakim on Street Apologist Live. Welcome to the show, my man Mike. How you doing? Shalom. How you doing, Vocab? It's a pleasure. Pleasure to be on your show. It's a blessing, bro. I'm just so honored that you would have us on. Oh, heck yeah, bro, man. We go back, and what you guys have done with this project is is even if I didn't know who you were, I would want to interview you just based upon the strength of this thing alone. So you guys can see Mike Ray, but on the audio side, we have Tony Ray. Tony, give the people a shout out. What's good, y'all? All right. Grace so and peace. Everybody, <laughs> I think everybody can hear you. Before we go any further, tell people right now how to buy this album. I'm going to promote it, obviously, tonight because the thing is off the chain. But let's tell them right now how to promote it. It looks like Rocks B is already dropping one of the links in. It is wrathandgrace.com. What are the other places people can grab it? You can also cop it at iTunes. Um, we are working, we're rolling it out kind of in pieces. We have some really exciting things. This is a really unconventional uh, release and some really exciting things. We can't give too much away right now, but we're going to be rolling it out in other venues. But we really encourage people to buy it before streaming it. So buy it at iTunes or Wrath and Grace. Mike, did you want to add anything to that? Yes. Uh, like Tony said, we're going to be, this is a different approach uh, than what we've been used to doing with putting out uh, our previous album. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a journey uh, and it's going to be a fun process. Also pick up the t-shirts. Uh, we're, 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 you know, also putting the, the origin t-shirt out too for now, but as time goes on, we'll be putting out more, more items. So, and yeah. so if someone buys a physical copy, which I know is coming out later, uh, as you mentioned, sort of a, of a rollout process, there's like basically an apologetics track, kind of like a, a booklet inside there. You guys, that's right. Explain people a little bit about that because they might be interested. Well, vocab, you actually had a big part to play in that. Um, you you co-wrote it. <laughs> you, you actually you wrote the bulk of it. I added a little bit on there, but uh, yeah, Mike, tell them what it's about, man. Yeah, it goes through the history of uh, the the Bible with regards to the worldview that we deal with today. And uh, how to have a biblical worldview in a world that, that that's anti, well, let me just, in a world that, that refutes and teaches others to believe in the theory of evolution. So uh, the way vocab laid it out, 
and the way you know Tony and him kind of got together. It's done beautifully. It has pictures in it, so it's a very uh, has a lot of information in it. So the, the album altogether, and that's what we want to do with this album was make it more than just an album. It's it's actually a whole project where we're trying to really make this thing come together uh, in light of the culture that we live in today. So. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, shout out to Nate in the super chat already hooking us up. Shout out to MJ Jackson. We have a couple other apologies actually in the live chat. He does some awesome stuff against the Comet Science Egyptologist guys. And we've already got some comments. Apparently, people have already bought the album because Disciples of the Underground says album is just as good as Theophanies. So maybe that's a good place oh. to start. Mike and Tony, <laughs> can you talk about your previous projects real quick and maybe. Uh, kind of what people could expect because i want people to get the trilogy if they haven't heard the other two and how how origins different differs from those two uh yeah so so the 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 first actually the very first project we released uh mike came up with the with the phrase hypologetics to describe what we do which is um basically apologetics in the medium of hip-hop right so back then not just rhyming but djing breaking all those elements were part of our life our lives and we wanted to give the gospel to the people within that context so we started out doing mostly street ministry um and college campus like outreach and open mics and stuff like that uh, and that was hypologetics in 2009 we released our first project on a label which was lamp mode recordings in philly and that was called theophanies and it's kind of it's gotten a bit of uh recognition for, for its uniqueness and and it focused on the pre-existence of Jesus, the Messiah, um, Old Testament appearances of Jesus, for example, Genesis 18, Genesis 32, where you have this this Malach, this angel of God, um, of Yahweh, who obviously was God, but was sent on divine missions. And we make the case in that album that the ultimate revelation uh, of this messenger came in the person of <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth, born of a virgin, you know, Jesus of Nazareth, that he is God. And that was the whole the whole argument um, against much of the false doctrine you hear in the Jehovah's Witnesses. Of course, some of the Hebrew Israelites, most of them, you know, uh, so-called Hebrew Israelites would deny the deity of, of, of Jesus. Mm -hmm. that, um, album, and, that album works perfect as a counter to a lot of their things that they say. That That's a great uh, point you just brought up. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah, so we, um, we, we, we dropped uh, that. And then in 2000 and... and uh, was it 14, bro? 2014? Yeah, 2014. Okay, right. we, we released uh, Son of Man, Ben Adam, and that was more of an eschatological album where we focused on the Son of God, the Messiah, not returning as the suffering lamb per se. We did touch on that, but more focusing on the Son of Man as Daniel saw him, riding on the clouds of heaven, coming to establish his authority over the earth. Um, and so there was a lot of es eschatological focus on that. And that album, by God's grace, cracked a couple of Billboard charts. It, it allowed us to do a lot of, you know, traveling and touring, in, in the the following years. And and yeah, man, we're 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 excited, bro. Did you want to <laughs> add anything to that? Sure. Just to go back on Theophanies, I remember when we did that album, uh, like you were saying earlier, Tony. Uh, we were running into a lot of issues with major uh, belief systems, uh, Muslims that uh, had problems with the deity of Jesus, uh, our our Jewish brothers that had a problem with Jesus. Uh, as, as as just as his messiahship, but with regards to God ever manifesting himself in a physical form in the New Old Testament was seen as taboo. Uh, so what we did was we highlighted parts in the Old Testament that said this is clearly, uh, you know, the, the the representation of God in a bodily form. And that album actually opened up the eyes of a lot of believers to learn how to share their faith. And actually, we got some cool uh, testimonies back with people that came to faith as a result of that album. And yeah, I agree with Tony when it comes to Son of Man. That was uh, that was more or less a, a, an album where we touched up on various things, but mainly the the Messiah coming in as King of Kings was the whole point of that album. So, yeah. yeah. But this one right here, I don't, don't want to jump ahead, but yeah, with this one, a lot of people are saying that it's it's uh, it's along the lines of the Theophanies, and that's actually what we were trying to do. Uh, we were trying to get back to kind of our sound, that Columbus sound, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right, right, right. You guys don't know. Uh, so we're originally all from Columbus, Ohio. They're in Florida now. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. But there's a certain influence that you have yes. if you came up in that era of Columbus hip hop. And the funny thing about us three, some of you have heard this story before, but not that much of you, uh, not that many of you. Man, what's going on with my grammar? But the way we met was at an underground open mic. 
And it was at a place that I, I think made uh, the set of 8 Mile look kind of Hollywood because this place is grimier than that because a lot of people only know that kind of underground hip-hop battle scene, but that was sort of a sanitized version of where we bumped into each other, which is a pretty hectic, crazy spot. But that's that's where we go. Hey, real quick, I can't help it. I just thought this comment was funny. Someone in the live chat says, uh, Mike, that <laughs> that looked like my old weed man. <laughs> Apparently, he, he's saying you look like his own you look like his own his, his former dope plug <laughs> well that's oh wow <laughs> that, we're definitely not that but yeah no nah, no nah, you push that dope off. that dope through music son that's yeah, right that's right there you go nah, but, I can supply you with the, with the apologetics music hope, that? <laughs> hope dealer hope dealer Lily R says I've been listening to Hazakeem since 2009 Carm M says I really like the fine tune song and uh, nice. someone else said that you guys sound like your Ram fans. <laughs> oh, nah. And then uh, <laughs> MJ they, they, lose they, they lost. They, they lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> MJ Jackson says he started listening to Hazakim after the Sakari roast. And we've also got my man Jay the producer and K Dub also in the live chat today. So dope. We got a lot of people checking this out. So this is good. Share the link again. Like it. Okay. So uh, let's let's talk about the album then. So the name of the project is Origins. I kind of have a, a, an example of the cover on the bottom of the screen, everybody. It's got kind of like a thumbprint there or fingerprint. I don't know actually which one. And then um, inside it, it's kind of like a picture of, of creation. You get a sense. And the idea, of course, is that God has left his mark through creation. And so this album points to that. So Break down where this concept came from, because you guys took one concept and went all the way in. That's rare in an era of digital singles. What? How did this come about? Because there's not many albums that are albums anymore. You know what I mean? So how did this? Right. Ha- how did this even happen? I'll just say this real quick. Tony and I kind of went back and forth on that. Uh, Tony kind of wanted to do the singles, and I said, Tony, Hazakim is known for doing actual projects. I felt like if we did singles there would be drops here and there of songs that had to do with creation. But I thought if we did more of a project, it would be well received uh, with regards to seeing the bigger picture. Um, So it was originally an idea that the Lord gave me um, one time. Uh, I did my first song dealing with the eye and the ear and uh, it's called look and listen. And it deals with uh, how the Lord constructed us so intricately. Um, It started off from that. It spawned from that. And then it it turned into a thing where I, I became so, uh, struck by our anatomy and how the Lord made us even so intricately uh, well. It's like, like I said, with the eye, if you listen to my verse about the eye, the hard thing about this album was trying to find ways to describe uh, such a, a detailed uh, item. And uh, as you read up on these things, you're like, what parts am I going to take from this that is going to stand out to the people? So from there, it, it, it turned into uh, The Brain, which, um, of course, we have up on YouTube, and a lot of people are showing up for, you know, for that one. Uh, you know it. And then also, uh, you know, other parts, too. I, I did a song about the heart um, because, you know, like I had an open heart surgery about two years ago. And um, like the Lord used this album in so many ways in my own personal life. And then from there, you know, me talking about uh, creation in, in the sense of our bodies and in the sense of our world, Tony came in and was able to somehow uh, put it all together, make it all kind of flow really well together with songs like I, uh, you know, uh, Fine Tune mm-hmm. and and other songs that he put out. So it, it's funny, Tony and I kind of always played off of each other. Um, I like to call us like Ira and George Gershwin. We're like brothers who who understand each other musically and we really complement each other with regards to our vision on an album. So. And let me add this real quick. Uh, the whole idea of Origins was Mike's idea, and I honestly thought it was nuts. I'm like, bro, this is this new era of rap music. They're not going to get it. Like, it's you know, like we can't be so focused. You know what I'm saying, Mike? You know what I mean? I have to admit, I'm eating crow. <laughs> no, um, no, bro, you're good, bro. No, no. <laughs> no, I mean, no and, and, smart. Yeah, and that's true. Since, since we're in a time where, you know, there's a certain sound and a certain idea, I just felt like, and, and I know vocab can appreciate this, but I felt like lyricism is being lost. And this is just aside from even what we're talking about apologetics-wise. Uh, I'm talking about even musically. Lyricism is being lost in, in rap music, and, and and we're trying to bring it back to that. We're trying to push back uh, and, and make uh, the Lord's voice heard. 
and not go along with the mainstream. Like really just be who we are, be creative, you know? That's good. Yeah, and 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 and, and just real quick, so that's that's true. And I appreciate Mike pushing me in that in that direction because again, I was trying to be pragmatic, right? 2018 at the, the 17, 18. Uh, rappers don't even like MC rapper. I don't call them MCs. Rappers, pop rappers, they don't even have top. They can't stay on topic. You know, even Eminem and other rappers have, have brought this out. Like rappers nowadays don't have a topic. They just kind of bounce around. Edit, but that is that. Went out with my boys and we drove from the Buick. Hey, everybody, I know it. So, yeah, why are you acting so stupid? Yeah, you know I mean, like they don't say anything, right? So, but the, but you know, so I honestly I was real like nervous. But as the album began to develop, I had to tell him, Mike, you're a genius, bro. Like, I give all the glory to God. But I'm I, giving my brother some props here. Like, he, he saw the bigger picture. And this album is not only intellectually and culturally a militant pushback against what we're being told. That, right, that we're the byproducts of random chance. That there's no absolutes. That God doesn't exist. It's also a stylistic militant pushback. Because in the midst of mumble rap, this album is super cerebral. You know what I'm saying? So it's literally cerebral. It has a whole song about the brain. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but uh, do that again, Tony. I think you had a hit on your hands. Hey, hey, hit, hey. hit with both cap. Hey, hey, everybody know the deal. Me hey. and my boys rocking the microphone. Hey, hey that know the deal. Oh, hey. I haven't said it, but kinda. Hey, yeah, I'm a people up and rider. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Dude, that's that's your that's your hit right there. That's, that's your, my calling, that's right? Your, that's, your, that's your golden <laughs> ticket, bro. Uh, yeah, Jay, Jay the producer says, "Man, I listened to this album and was like, man, these guys know a whole lot about body parts." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jay, by the way, because Jay's on two songs, he did an excellent job. Um, there's a, the version that we initially sent him is old, so just to let you know, brother, cop the new. I, I'll send you the newest version. I don't know if you got it, but I'm gonna email you, Jay, the the last version. We made some changes uh, from from the one that you heard. That's just a side for Jay. Go K-Dub, ahead. K Dub does want to know what songs Jay is on. Look and listen. You mentioned he's on that one, right? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Lifeblood. So uh, explain. You already you already explained. Look and listen. And if people are following the concept, I think they should be able to get that one. What is Lifeblood about, though? See, the cool thing about this album that I'm excited about is I I explain. And for example, the blood, uh, physically, what it does for us, how it runs through our veins, uh, everything involved with it. That's what I always try to do. I always try to explain um, throughout the years, all the songs that I've written, crucifixion description, um, where I literally try to explain what Jesus went through on the cross on the Apennines, by the way. Um, and then also uh, other songs, uh, Lyra Lunatic, Florida Legend, I went into Yeshua's uh, claim as being the Messiah. I remember like going into detail on that. With this one, I, I go into detail on the blood and what what's involved. So yeah, there was a lot of looking and, and 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 doing a lot of research to get it. But then on the second verse, I go into, or actually Tony comes in on that one, and he goes into spiritually what the blood is to us and how it ties in with salvation. Um, not to jump ahead of you, vocab, but even with uh, the song about the heart. I talk about the heart in a physical way yeah. as far as explaining what it does, how it pumps blood and, and that sort of thing. And then we go into the second verse and I explain spiritually what the heart looks like, how the Bible describes the heart. So like there's there's parts of this, like even with look and listen, um, at the end of the second verse, I talk about he that has ears to hear, let mm -hmm. him hear what the spirit is saying. He that has eyes to see, you know, so it's almost like we try to take these things and use it in a spiritual way to make people kind of see that there's a greater picture even with our physical bodies right, that God's right. trying to see. Yeah. Now that's what's real dope. This album, it breaks down the intelligent design, the fingerprint, the handiwork of God in creation. But then after they talk about the actual physical aspect, and I'm just reiterating literally what Mike said, but I just want you guys to catch this because this is such an intricate, dope, almost, it's weird. It's almost obvious once you hear it, but it's, it's like ingenious until it's sort of unveiled. Then they'll talk about the spiritual aspect of whatever physical body part they're talking about. Like, oh, here's one of my favorite ones. The song about the precipit how do you say it? The precipitation cycle? Is that how you say it? The water cycle. Yeah. The water cycle. Yeah. 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 So with precipitation and rain, the last verse, Mike, can you kind of break down? Because you guys, it's, it's, so today in Phoenix it rained, which is rare. So I'm with the kids in the All car right. on the way to church. I'm like, hey, guys, let's listen to the song about rain. <laughs> <laughs> so we're driving to church and we're uh, rocking the song about rain and then i noticed i was like oh the last verse it switches to like the living water 
and the reign of God, R E I G N. I was like, oh, this is dope. But can you talk a little <laughs> bit about that? Because that that was a uh, real that was real slick. That that, that you, song. Bro. What's the name of that song? The rain song. Let it pour. Let yeah, it pour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So on that one, um, yeah, it, it's it, you know, if we really stop and just consider God's creation, everything points back to Him. Mm. And all through the scriptures, we see how God uses, like, you know how the scripture says, men are without excuse. We're without excuse. Yep. Uh, a fool says in his heart, there's no God. There's so much proof. And, and even like me using the song about water to explain God's power and how it would be impossible. The whole point of that was it would be impossible if there were no God for anything to exist. But let's just assume that God did not exist and that we have all this land that has to be watered. How in the world could that possibly be done? So if you listen to the first verse, I'm explaining taking the water, chugging it along, how much it will weigh. The, the, just the impossibilities of something like that. There you go. Amen. There you go. So, <laughs> so and then I go into uh, the cycle of what the Lord did to make the water uh, process work for humans to drink it. And yet at the same time, allow fish to, to uh, swim in seawater. So it, it sounds crazy, but yeah, the Lord allowed that to work. So like I said, everything points back to his, his glory and his creation. And that was definitely dope. Now, you know, I, I want to give him his love before he leaves or something like that. Um, so, the way um, I think this came together, if I'm right, is we had a, a crew of different urban apologists who worked together to deal with different things, such as Hebrew Israelites. And uh, Jay, the producer, is somebody, you know, Brother Jay, that I was working with. And then I think somehow through that, then Tony got to know Jay. And then I guess you guys had a situation where you wanted him to do some stuff. And I think the way you said it, Tony, is he did so such a good job that you asked him to do a second thing or something. I mean, can you talk about, like, working with Jay? Because I want people to – I hope this also raises Jay's, like, profile. I hope more in, people in CHH kind of take note and, and see, oh, who's this guy? Because uh, yeah, he hooked I've, it been, up. I, I've actually been promoting Jay um, to, to some other guys at Wrath and Grace that, uh, you know, who I work with. Um, he's a super talented singer and writer. And writing catchy melody, you know, that can also kind of summarize a song is not easy to do. Everyone can't do it. So we initially sent Mike's song, uh, Look and Listen, which is a super, it's probably the most scientific of the of all songs. We have a, I produced with, along with Spec from Clear Sight, a decently catchy beat, but it was still super cerebral. What Jay did was he came in and brought that like, fun element to the hook and he did such a good job on it we had another song lifeblood which was another song that mike kind of mike really wrote it i just kind of on the tail end added a few thoughts on the spiritual end um and and yeah i sent it to jay like bro uh and i got yeah i gotta get jay the newest version of the album but but he did an excellent job um yeah. of of the hook like on the hooks they're my favorite hook among my favorite hooks on the album for sure yeah, I mean, Jay, you hooked it up, Jay. And I think it's dope because you have, with this album, uh, different folks working together who actually do apologetics in an urban kind of context, but then making music together as well. So it's just it's just dope, man. I'm, I'm real excited about this. A uh, shout-out to Lily R. in the Super Chat. And uh, Lily R., she's from Brooklyn, so if she likes your guys' stuff, must be must be good. <laughs> Ah, praise God. <laughs> and um, so, okay, so we've got um, this album, Origins. Let's go through, though, some of the other songs. Uh, I think one of the first ones is called Origino. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, a, that's a dope way. It starts off the album. What's um, that's that, the idea? What's sort of the idea behind that song, Origino? Sure. Yeah, well, and actually the title switched. People were getting it confused before we released it. Since we released it, we just made it Original. Because <laughs> people were messing up, but go ahead, bro. Because that's really Mike's track. You're good. You're good. Hey, I want, I want to, uh, I want to really uh, encourage people out there. If you get the chance, it's on YouTube and it's free. It's a documentary called God of Wonders, and you guys probably already saw it. But if you never saw it, it's about an hour long. Sit down and watch it. It's so powerful. At the beginning of it, they actually just go through this, the simple things in life. They start showing trees. They show birds. They show nature doing its thing and. And seeing how God uh, is being glorified. So for me, I was thinking, you know, it would be a nice idea to start our album out where we're just glorifying God's creation. Like I'm picking out things. There's so many 
wonderful things to talk about. But for me, it was almost like I thought, Lord, like, what can I do to kind of point out things about you that, that will make people want to raise their hands and worship you, you know? Mm-hmm. So that song actually is just a praise and worship song where I'm just saying, but it, it's almost like I'm explaining him to you and I'm going into detail about things. I'm talking about cells and how they work and everything. But at the same time, it's like, but look at the God that we serve. You know, he's he's wonderful. And so we're, we're saying, give him give him honor, give him glory. And uh, that's pretty much what it is. It's like a, just the opener to the album to say, you know, he was, he is, and he is to come. We're going to give him worship, you know, so. And, so and, and real quick, bro, let me add this too, because before that we have an intro mm-hmm. um, yeah. called The Lord is King. And the outro is called The Lord, Forever Shall the Lord Be King. And it's part of a Hebrew, <clears throat> excuse me, a Hebrew prayer or a right. Hebrew piece of liturgy called Adonai Melech. The Lord is King, Adonai Melech. And so we had a gentleman named Jonathan Sattel, popular uh, singer. He sings in Hebrew, English, Spanish. So we had him read it. He has a super cool voice. But uh, there's a composer named John Campbell who did, um, I don't know if the people listening are familiar with Adventures in Odyssey. He's their Mm. musical director. He did Adventures in Odyssey. He did some stuff with Narnia. Uh, He's done tons of Disney projects. The guy is a super accomplished uh, composer. We reached out to him and kind of shared our music. He actually composed original intro and outro pieces for us and gave them to us just as a, like, cause he really went, like, was blessed by what we were doing. And uh, so I just got to give him a shout out. John Campbell did an amazing job. Very beautiful pieces that almost set the, the, the tone of the album in terms of the majesty of God. Yeah, uh, I was going to ask you, uh, like off, I, when, I was like, man, I want to ask Tony, where did he get, you know, where did he get this stuff from? Because this doesn't sound like something that was sampled. And then the guy doing the voiceover, I was like wondering, is that, is that Tony just doing that? And I was like, no, that's not him. Who, who is that? <laughs> I was wondering, cause that it's like a real professional, like something you would hear, you know, in the beginning of one of those, you know, I don't know, like official, like audio books or something. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's yeah, pretty, pretty true. dope. So much yeah. love. Shout out to Rox B with the super chat. You guys are killing it tonight. And, uh, Man, we got we got some real faithful people. Aristotler says, "I like that they started with a m- meditation on the Creator before wading into the specific parts of creation." The book had me lifting my hands in the car with my kids. Wow! Praise the Lord! Wow! So that's that's awesome. So I mean, that one, album's only been out like basically two days, and uh, you know, people were uh, already you know <laughs> feeling it like this. K-Dub does wow. want to know about the physical CDs. My understanding is you guys are in the process of, of making those, right, physical copies? Yeah, so we're going to be rolling out physical copies. It's going to be a really special thing, and we're working with a uh, – I don't want to give away details until it's completed, but a very popular uh, and influential creationism ministry here in the States um, on a curriculum. So we want to kind of roll out the CD, and it already comes with the booklet vocab that you contributed on uh nice. but it, uh, but also an entire curriculum and yeah details to be announced again i don't want to give away too much until it's actually done but that's uh right mike we want to roll out the cd with the curriculum yes I, and like i said earlier with regards to this album it's it's such a, a exhaustive uh, it, there's just so much involved with uh with with this that is, it's almost like a, a process. And like I said, for us, this is kind of new. We're, we're taking steps of faith to see how things work. So it's different in that regard. So yeah, there's going to be an, an extra book that's going to come with it from a, a big ministry that's really excited about helping us with this album. But like we said, for now, you know, the, the book that you put together in vocab is beautiful, guys. I would get the hard copy just for that alone. It's beautiful. I agree. Beautiful. I agree. <laughs> that's awesome, man. This is it's very exciting. Jennifer Mean says, hi, Tony. If you all do another album and need a flute player, Xander said he is ready now. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome. then Aristotle, now you may not be able to reveal this, bro, but Aristotle is, is trying to ask, what was the song that they sampled on Matters of the Heart? Uh, oh, that yeah. is, I don't give away my my secrets. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't do that. I, it is Hebrew. I'll, it say, is this. Hebrew. I'll say this. Uh, I actually, uh, when I got back from Israel... I've been listening to a whole lot of Israeli artists and uh, I, I stumbled across that and I gave it to Tony and I said, bro, man, I love this song. You know, it's just the song itself is beautiful. 
But if you try to find it, I don't know if you know how to read Hebrew. You know, not saying that. Anyways, that's where it came from. It's, it's, it's yeah, and, it, and it's a very it's like from the '60s era, right? It's right. old school exactly. Hebrew music. So there, really there's all the hints you're gonna get right there. Yeah, but, I but, can't. But the melody was like, how did it go? Let's. It's like na 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 na. How was it? It was something like that. Oh, uh, it's beautiful. Uh, I'm, trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to do the I'm trying to do the melody though, but you know. Something and then like I, I gotta. So since we're on this song, and Mike kind of broke down. The process of, of, you know, he, he approached the heart from a strictly anatomical standpoint. And then the second verse from the, what the Bible says, we all uh, and, and uh, me and, and, and Speck and with Mike, of course, Mike gave us the, the sounds. But we, we kind of put, you know, put the finishing touches. We had DJ Eduardo, I believe, um, a brother, a good brother from from uh, <laughs> the Northeast. I want to say from like close to New York or, or Pennsylvania. Yeah, he, he laid some scratches. But then our sister Hannah from from Jerusalem read one of the psalms at the end in Hebrew, and that really kind of brought it together. Really uh, right. beautiful song. That's dope. That's real dope. All right, uh, one person wanted to know how the argument from design, how was it extrapolated out of the song about the water cycle? They said uh, if you could explain that. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. It goes back to kind of what I was saying. I was reading a book one time with regards to uh, God, uh, God's design and how he's able to distrib- distribute Distribute. <laughs> it's getting late. Distribute water across the the, the the areas that need it the most. The fact of the fact the fact of the matter is, man needs water. We need it to survive, right? But then, when you look at uh, how it's going to be distributed across the land, um, the odds of no God coming up with the an idea of getting it everywhere is, is really is crazy. It's, it's, it's like, uh, like I said, if there was no God, we'd have to use, uh, figure out a way to take the water, put it on trucks, travel across the country and across land, irrigate, and also, you know, get it out, go back, somehow get the salt out of the water, go across the land. It's just like, these are things that I think that we don't think about that kind of just points to, wow, a creator had to have a there was a genius behind this idea of making water work for humans because it's already everywhere. I mean, the, the whole earth is mostly water, but the way the Lord has allowed it to become drinkable water for man is a very powerful thing. Yeah, and it's, it's like that sounds very small to a certain degree, but when you really think about it, it's completely big. So. No, bro, I think it's uh, just to add to that. I think it's one of the most profound things said on the album because. Like you said, the fact that the atmosphere is a filtration device, like Mm -hmm. the water is evaporated into our atmosphere, impurities and salt from the ocean is is separated from the water. Then it falls down as rain. Right. (laughs) Like um, uh, and, and not only man, but the plants and the various animals all get water that's drinkable. Um, And and still, you know, and and just the the entire process points to the fine tuning of the universe that whatever whoever created this world put a lot every i mean the smallest detail paid attention to every detail and and these processes for them to happen by random chance is highly unlikely that's right excellent. you're right bro i guess when i say that it might seem small it's just because we drink water every day yeah and it's almost like we, we we use our eyes every day like you know we, it, like these things we know about because we're so used to it. But if I were to peer inside of your eye or vocab's eye and to see everything that's going on, it would blow my mind. And that's the thing. I just think that I know for myself, it was an eye opener for me to where sometimes when I was writing these lyrics, I had to put my stuff down and go, Lord, you are awesome. Like it really boggles my mind how you have done these things. So that kind of go, I go, I hope that answers the question about the water song. If that uh, oh, bro, helps. no, perfect, perfect, homie. That's yeah, it. I think it does. I think it does. Now, what about um, you know you guys are quoting um, almost like it almost seems some parts like man these guys are like reading from biological biology textbooks and chemistry textbooks. So, but you guys also tie in scriptures. Can you talk about sort of the interplay and maybe some of the passages that were fundamental? Uh, to you as you thought about this album, you know, like key verses or anything like that as far as the scriptural side of it? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, I mean, when I, like for the heart song, for example, you know, I think of um, times where, you know, sharing my faith, I, I, I 
You know, in, in this climate that we live in, where there's so much going on politically and a lot of things going on, um, and I share my faith with people and I talk about the heart being desperately wicked. I mean, these scriptures are things that just pop out to me. And when I'm talking about the heart, and when I, when I decided to tackle the song about the heart, that immediately came to my mind. The heart is just, dis- now I know that our physical heart and our spiritual heart are two different things, but the Bible talk, talks about it as a heart, you know what I mean? So I would think about scriptures that just come out when sharing the gospel. Uh, uh, you know, certain parts, like, or the blood given on the altar for your soul for atonement. Um, it's like the, the two just come together. He that has ears to hear. When Yeshua was w- would preach in the synagogues, you know, he would say, he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So it's almost like we're, we're using what God has given us, you know, to see what the Lord wants us to hear and to see, you know. So it's like I, those scriptures, I think they intertwine so well. So you have anything to add with that, bro? Yeah, yeah, I would just, yeah, I, I think all throughout scripture, and especially in the ministry of, of Jesus, of Yeshua, um, uh, you, you see where God takes physical realities. So, like, we almost killed two birds with one stone on this album. On, like, the first bird being <laughs> the obvious evidence for God, like Romans 1 says, you know, we are without excuse. All of creation has made it abundantly clear that God exists, right? So we bang that out just by, and and the whole reason that we're pointing out this these, aspects of anatomy and nature is to show people how preposterous it would be to believe that any of this is accidental, right? So we're knocking out that bird. The second bird is to teach spiritual lessons regarding salvation through the physical world. So um, even with the brain song, you know, uh, Mike goes into how the brain works. And it really is, I mean, to this day, philosophers kind of debate the difference, the distinction between the brain and the mind, you know, the immaterial part of, of the soul, um, that makes you, you, you know, your, your thoughts, your, your, you know, your innermost, uh, beliefs and your con, you know, your consciousness. So, um, uh, and that's the, that what you just said right there, um, is the lyric video that's out. Um, yeah. If people haven't seen that yet, they definitely need to see it. Um, I've retweeted it several times. It's on Wrath and Grace too. The, the Wrath and Grace is YouTube now, so so it's up on YouTube. We, we put it up, you know, after we put it up on social media. But but like in that song, uh, we we wrap it up by showing how the existence of an immaterial mind, using the brain as a sort of interface, so that so that the soul can connect to the body, points to even like the fact that we have to give an account to God, right? Mm-hmm. There's a greater mind that created all of these things. And it points to the fact that we will give an account to that mastermind. Behind all of it, there's a mastermind, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's the whole concept. So, yeah, like two birds, right? The first being we kill naturalism, this absurd idea that, that, that everything is here by random chance. The second bird is, is, is tying in those spiritual truths, those spiritual lessons through the natural world. Yeah, and it's – I don't – people realize, but you guys are getting into uh, what actually is called – philosophy of mind and neurology just all in that one song and within that you know i went to graduate school at talbot and that was something that was actually brought up and studied and looked at extensively and uh one of my profs jp moreland the argument from consciousness is one of his um arguments he's developed really uh, far along and has done a fantastic job on and in that there's a couple things to recognize and part of it, everyone, is what, what um, Tony had said, that there's a distinction between the brain and the mind. And so in an evolutionist worldview, especially the hard materialism-type worldview, all you have is sort of this meat machine, this flesh computer, but it doesn't seem – well, it, it really doesn't. I'm saying seem just to uh, – almost that's how philosophers talk. But, but it, 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 it doesn't explain everything about your thought life, and there's a whole lot of – problems and issues and challenges with that and in fact if that's all that's happening and this is something that was brought up when i interviewed frank turek everybody last week which i encourage you to listen to he mentioned how if that's all you've got going on then all your thoughts are simply the result of neurochemical reactions you don't really have any reason to trust them that they're rational or that really you play any role in even what you think and as doug wilson said in one of his debates you're sort of just pop fizzing at that point because that's all that's really happening but you show the differences and then you even now you don't say the concept you don't say the word 
but you actually get into a concept that neuroscientists are discovering called neuroplasticity. Uh, and that's the idea that somehow the actual grooves in your brain, so the physiological makeup of the brain, can actually be changed, but it's sort of inexplicable how that is. And it has to do actually with the thoughts that you're thinking. You create new grooves, neural pathways in essence, by the thoughts you think. So something is acting on the physical aspect of you. Well, what is that? And sort of that's the mind and the brain, and it's a whole set of complex, interesting things. But at the end of the day, it comes down to a powerful apologetic argument, really. And it's crazy that yeah. you guys manage to fit all that in, in, in a hip-hop song. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, it was it was tough. Uh, you know, like I said, even with the brain, I remember thinking, man, there's so much here. What can I use to make it stand out? You know, that's, that's the hard part about writing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so. uh, Aristotle wants to know, was you know also a nod to the suppressing the knowledge of God? You know the oh you know it yeah you know yeah. It. my bad I, I I misread what he said but yeah well, he, that's what he was asking about yeah yeah because yeah at the um, the song kind of ends with you know the mastermind who created it all will give an account we're created for eternity and not just for the moment hard to wrap your brain around it but deep inside you know it and that's the idea we want to suppress it but deep inside men know that there's a God I mean it's it's obvious all right. in all of creation so yeah man. That's good. All right. Um, um, shout out to everyone. Roxby and Lily R., you guys are killing it in the super chat. Much love. And I got DJ Fidel Castro in the house, a.k.a. Richard James. He's uh, one of my friends who was uh, a producer and, uh, and, and, and DJ when I was uh, doing stuff. And we got some good comments here. With that atheistic worldview, everything is accidental and arbitrary, and we cannot trust our minds. And I think even Darwin said that. He's like, how do I know really it's just not the thoughts of a, of a, of a monkey or an ape? He said something like that. And you guys brought um, up Darwin, uh, I believe. Was it in regards to the eye of how that created yeah. a doubt for Darwin? What did he say and what was the point of, of that? I, th I always like when I hear that quote from Darwin. Um, but can you uh, get into that? Because you guys gave a nod to it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the first things that I heard. But, well, after looking into Darwin's life, it's a sad story. It's this story is kind of sad, honestly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he, uh, uh, I, I did read that uh, on his deathbed, he mentioned that the eye was the one thing that had him really, uh, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say second guessing. Who knows what happened? Um, but I would say that with regards to him really considering at least intelligent design, that's the one thing that really struck him. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know the exact quote as far as what he said. It's, it's somewhere. But I know that, that he made mention to the, uh, the eyes being mm -hmm. a very well put together, uh, uh, I don't know, mechanism. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty powerful. Uh, and I said that actually in the verse just to tell people, hey, you know, even your the guy that you guys looked up to with the origin of species by means of natural selection and preservation for the favored races and the struggle for life, even he had problems with, with the eye. He had problems with creation deep in his heart. But like Tony said earlier, deep inside, people know. They know the gods. They know that there's a God. And that's the reason why a lot of atheists fight him so hard, because he rocks their their conscience. And it's almost like, I don't believe in... Remember that whole thing, Tony, for a while? The, the, what was that? The match, this spaghetti flying creature? Oh, the flying was. spaghetti monster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. pop yeah. So I don't, yeah, I don't believe in that. So I don't bother. I mean, you're not going to hear me... Uh, put up websites and try to debunk it and all that. It's almost like the things I don't believe in, I'm not going to put that much energy into. I've always said, and this may sound crazy, but I believe this with all my heart, that atheists are the biggest believers in the world, but they're just mad at God. A lot of them have issues with God. Um, so that's just kind of my own belief. So we're just, you know, with this album, we're really just trying to show people just the basic things and really making them step back and look and let their conscience work with them. That's, that's pretty much the whole point. So let's see what we've discussed. The Lord is King, original. Oh, I see you guys change it. I like the original, but I, I get it. People are slow, whatever. You know it. <laughs> Look and listen. Fine tune. Let it pour. Falling apart. Millennium. Matters of the heart. Think about it. Why we're here. Lifeblood. And it was good forever. Shall the Lord be King. Now, uh, we're gonna, we can talk about Millennium last, but I think we haven't really discussed fine tune that much. And... And it was good. Am I? Are there any others that we kind of haven't discussed? Because I want to make sure. I think that about it. I'm going to let you, bro. I'll let you take over. Tony did. It was good. He also did. Uh, 
Yeah, the other one, bro, bro about uh, how our body works on its own. I think you should touch up on those two. Well, no, and it was good. Was a collaborative effort, but uh, yeah. So, so fine tune. I just kind of wanted to wrap up a lot of what's being said, and and the, the the whole theme of the album is that the universe. Well, not the whole theme, but one of the major themes is that everything, the universe, the world we live in, our our anatomy. And I think the reason Mike focused so much on the anatomy, I mean, there's aspects of creation beyond ourselves that could easily point to God. But I think it, the reason that we focused on the self is because this generation is focused on the self. So, like, you know, there's a song about the water cycle. There's a song, you know, there, there, there are things that are other things that are alluded to. But what what is most intimate, what is most relatable to most people is their own bodies, especially in 2019. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? So... We, yeah, yeah, the selfie generation. So we focused on the self, the things that people take for granted that they enjoy, the heartbeat. So fine tuning, I kind of uh, branched out a little bit in a more broad sense um, to just talk about, the, you know, I use the fine tune, the argument from fine tuning that the universe and life, every aspect of, of existence is, is so fine tuned for life to be possible. Mm-hmm. That it that it's it would be beyond magic, beyond unbelievable. It it it, it it's 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 it's. I mean, I don't know. It's like fantasy to 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 believe that an explosion can create such order. Right. That that code like DNA and intelligence and logic and all these things that we that we have can come out of anything but an intelligent designer who fine tuned it, who tuned the knobs of creation perfectly for the conditions that allow for life. And then think about it was just, okay, so how does this fit our world? Like, what does this have to do? Why does this matter? Okay, there's a God, okay. So think about it was kind of like my way of saying, look, your worldview is is is, is affected by what you believe about your origins. Mm-hmm. If you believe that you're just the byproducts of random chance and stardust, then your life has no meaning ultimately. I mean, right. you, can, you can give it whatever meaning you want, but ultimately it has no meaning, you're just, kind of like glorified stardust who thinks they're important, but you're not really that important. You know what I mean? So Yeah, you just give it arbitrary temporal meaning, but that's not really meaning. Yeah. That's 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 right. what you do. If I, actually I debated an atheist, it was actually kind of a sad debate. Uh on the on the origin not on the origin, I'm sorry. On me, meaning and meaning and purpose and the debate was about uh, you know, is there objective meaning or purpose to life? And, um, of course, you know, he had to say no. It's was, it was kind of a sad debate. A lot of you guys have heard that. Um, I got a question. Well, Go ahead. Real, uh, real quick, I, uh, so keep that question. But but another thing I focused on and think about it, I wanted it to be a happy and encouraging song, mm-hmm. is all the things that, that are taken care of for us on our behalf that we don't think about. And that's why the song is called Think Of. We don't think about our heart beating. Mm-hmm. Since we've been having this interview, but all over all three of us, our hearts have been beating for us and we don't give it a thought our eyes blink yep. and and scientists have found that your eyes not only blink to lubricate and all that but also to give your brain your mind a brief moment of rest because right. all the stimuli coming out at, coming at you from all directions through your eyes visual stimuli if you never blinked and your eyes didn't have that split second to reset you would literally go insane so all these things like we don't have to think about it mm-hmm. god gives them to us so i, I kind of left it a really encouraging track and then the last song, and it was good, we'll talk about this in a minute, that was like, okay, it's culture war. This was a culture war anthem. But go ahead um, with the, the question, bro. Yeah, well, think about it. I was listening to it today, and I was like, did Tony manage to write a song about involuntary actions? Yes. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I, was like I, think, I think Tony's writing a song, at least partially, about involuntary actions. But, you know, you guys mentioned fine-tuning, and it's been brought up several times, obviously. Um, in Collision, if you watch with Douglas Wilson and – Christopher Hitchens, who was my favorite atheist when he was alive, he mm-hmm. said that that's the one argument uh, that you know theists gave that gave him pause. The fact that the universe was balanced on a, a fine, you know, razor's edge, and then uh, you know you guys have guys, you guys got um, people like Lawrence Krauss who say silly things like, "Well, if it wasn't like that, we wouldn't be here to observe it," or something like that. And then they say yeah. silly things like, well, if he was really a great creator, he would have made it with a broader parameter. <laughs> you know, right, right. Really silly right. things. I bring up Krauss because uh, uh, this week I'm going to have a, a show air where Hugh Ross, 
critiques Krauss's uh, theoretical physics in regards to the origin, but as far as the origin of the universe. So I encourage you guys to check that out. But here's the question that Carm asked. She would like to ask a question, how long to write a song usually? So Ooh, good question. especially as far as this album goes. It varied, bro, right? Like there were times you were just like in that zone and then there were times where you did had to do more research, right? Kind of varied. Right, right. It's funny. Um, for me, like I'm the type of person, this might sound strange, but I'm gonna let you guys in on kind of how I write. I write like a like a person that's putting together a movie. First of all, I don't write to a beat, I actually write. And then I actually write I write first, then I come up with ideas, I piece them together, and I see like a screen. Like a like a film, and I'm trying to put that the the characters in their places to make it work. Um, so for me, it, it may take about I'll use uh, the eye and the ear. The eye, the eye I wrote in about a month, and then I, I put it down. I didn't come back to it for another year. This was a while ago. Um, and then with regards to the uh, the brain, see, like Tony said, with that one, I was able to just knock that out piece by piece, anywhere between two to three weeks. Uh, some of them took a while just because I would get frustrated. Like I said, writing this kind of stuff isn't easy. So I would get frustrated, put it down, and not come back to it for a couple of months. I know that sounds crazy, but it's almost like with this sort of thing, you just want it to be done so right and for people to understand. Mm-hmm. It's all about water. Um, I did most of it. It took about a couple of uh, months to do that. Yeah. And then when I presented it to Tony when we were recording it, Tony actually helped me to piece together some parts nice. that I felt like needed to piece be put in there um, to the, kind of put it together. The one about water, did you uh, come up with while in the shower? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Hey, Brandon. I came up with it I was <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Root says uh, partnership with Answers in Genesis. Yes, LOL. Uh, that, that's, a details, that's a comment. That's a comment on the live stream. I don't know hey, how it got there. Who's been talking? I don't know. Uh, details to be announced, brothers. Uh, we're working on some things. Keep us in prayer. Because I, I think that really a project like this in, in the current climate of our culture mm-hmm. can 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 be a profound project. And but we would need ministry support like we would need right. the assistance of ministries that have more influence. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so, yeah, just just keep us in prayer, guys, uh, regarding that. Nice. Right. Uh, Rocks. Being... Him actually, he, he made a cameo on a Theophanies, which is really yeah. cool. He just kind of did a drop for us. So we're oh. we're we already know him. Hey, oh, hey, man. Tony, can you do your Ken Ham real quick, bro? Oh, I don't do Ken. I don't do Ken. <laughs> yeah, you don't, don't lie, bro. I've heard you do a Ken Ham. Nah, it was whack. I don't oh. do Ken Ham, bro. <laughs> my my Ken Ham, the, my Australian accent is not that good, bro. We, whatever, <laughs> man. Okay. Rock, <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> this is kind of related, but Roxby wants to know how much research went into each song. A lot. A lot. Yeah. 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 Hey, Roxby, what's up, man? How you doing, bro? Oh, that's yeah, that, that's I, a sister. That's a Doug, sister. That, yeah, sister. Doug. Sister. Oh, from bro, that's a, bro that, that's a sister. From the Northwest. That's a, that's a, yeah, Rox, Rox is a. Oh, there's, a, there's another, there's another MC named Roxby that I heard of. Oh, My bad. That's I'm all right. I mean, you can't tell by the avatar. Hey, it's like a. Every question. I'm so sorry. There's another brother that I know that used to rock with that name, but. Um, that's true. That's right. There was a Roxby. Yeah. 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 I thought that was some. But anyway. Yeah, to answer your question, uh, a lot went into that. A lot. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about pads, pens, books, footnotes, uh, you know, a lot. Because you want to make sure your stuff's together, especially before you get it out there. You don't want no, no teachers coming back or doctors saying, you actually were wrong about that last part, you know. So that you had to make sure everything was on point. Um, but a lot it's, went into it. And some of it, too, bro, is the – so some of it required re- research. Some of it was the accumulation of information and apologetics that we've gotten since we were young believers. You know what I mean? Like fine-tune – On a spiritual level, you're right, Tony. That's true. When it comes to uh, answering for our faith, yeah, that's like been our upbringing. Uh, but with regards to the medical side and all the uh, scientific stuff, yeah, there was a little bit of research. But, yeah, Tony, you're right with that. That's, that's, yeah, that's but- actually been – like I said, that's the foundation of what Hazakim has, has always been. Apologetics has always been our thing. And and just to, to put this, to interject this in there, um, what got me into it really was, I remember when I graduated, even, you know, during high school, uh, I'd be the only person in class defending the faith. Everyone in the class would be coming up against me. One person here, one person there. just And I'm like Bruce Lee, you know, just with my nunchucks trying to answer questions. You know what I mean? And in the same way, it was like that in college. So I got... 
I, I really got an interest in we need more apologetics uh, in rap music. And then uh, I heard a, a cat by the name of Roz Cos back in the day who was dissing, you know, mm -hmm. believers, mm -hmm. putting us down. And then so I wrote my first like rhyme that that was kind of a counter to what he was saying because I was so sick and tired of people always dissing believers, putting us down like we had no proof. Well, we right. have the proof, you know. So let, it was one of those. Things. That was that was like my passion at the time. Let and freedom still ring, is. but first with a buckshot. You know, his he is still his albums still are dissing God and all that. He, he, if you listen to his last project, it's still actually on that tip. It's actually like worse than ever. I forget what it what it was, but it was something like uh, I'm a God or something. I forgot what his, what the last one was, but he's still on that. But yeah, so I'm maybe I'm, we should tag maybe we should tag him on on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because we're here, you know. what I mean, we got we got some strong, solid believers that know what we're talking about. And the fool has said in his heart, "There is no God." You know, and the fact of the matter is, Roscos is going to stand before the Lord, and he's going to give an account for everything he's ever said, and he's he's going to regret that day. So we're trying to reach out to the cast like him and say, "Hey, repent, man. God, he's he's the real deal. He died for your sins. Get right with him." So, amen, you know. amen. Kevin Burkhart asks, "Are there any features on the album?" There are no rap features. We have uh, Spec uh, from Clear Sight. He works with, with Flame, does a lot of uh, production and hooks for Flame. He sings on the hook, uh, and he also works with V-Rose. And then we have Jay the Producer. Outside of that, yeah, it's kind of like Theophanies. Theophanies, we had Shy Lin on one hook, and we had Stephen the Levite on a verse. But there wasn't a lot of features on Theophanies. This album is really all... Us and I think it worked out that way. Like it works, it works. You yeah, I was actually, you know what? It's cool because by the time the album was done, I was actually thinking to myself, "Wow, we are like we haven't." Usually, everybody has a feature on their album as far as another MC. Who's the last cat that I know about that hasn't done that? Like Nas's first Illmatic album, he didn't have any features. Ah, uh, he? he had AZ. He had AZ. Oh, on, uh, okay, okay. That AZ. But you know, that, cool. you know that, that different. Yeah, it was. I think that was actually the only one. That AZ verse, that verse oh, alone okay. is what got AZ signed. I, I, read, yeah, I actually right. watched a whole documentary uh, about uh, it. Because that, yeah. AZ, that well, AZ verse was killer. <laughs> but it's crazy, though. I think that it's kind of cool when you see artists just kind of stick with them, you know, just for an album, just do what they do without, you know, without any features. I mean, it was different. It was different for me and Tony because we've always had features on our albums. All right, do you guys want a controversial question now? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Curious, would you steer brothers and sisters away from Biologos or see them as just another take on creationism? Do you guys know what Biologos is? No, I'm not hip. They, no. they are the, an evangelical ministry that sole mission is to criticize young earth creationists and promote theistic evolution. Uh, I would absolutely steer them away from that. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want to get into a young earth debate, but we are young earth uh, uh, creationists. We believe in six literal days of creation. Um, I don't I don't know if that's as big of a deal as what I'm going to say. Like, that's not something I would say. You're not my brother over. Right, right, right. I'm not going to part from the faith. I don't think you're departing from the faith if you don't believe in six literal days. But I do believe and me and Mike believe that billions of years is a compromise. Like it's an unnecessary compromise because when Adam was created, if you looked at him and said, how old is this man? You wouldn't think a day old. Yeah. Right? Or God even made him. Five minutes. Be, you know, he'd be five yeah, minutes old. Yeah, five minutes. Like, he looks he like was, a 30-year-old man. Yeah, he was fully made, fully perfected at age, but like within within instant, within an instant. So I, I don't think that the reason evolutionists need billions of years is because how long would it take for nothing to make everything so complex? And so fine tuned. Yeah, they consider millions of years. They consider yeah. time, in essence, uh, a resource because you have to keep on having random events happen. And in exactly. the sort of the general idea is, if you get enough random events, then eventually you can get what you need. You know, that's kind of. Yeah. But here's the thing. So, you know, I, I've I've got I've interviewed people from Reasons to Believe. That's an old Earth creation. Uh, ministry. Now, I haven't talked about other stuff. For example, I think Hugh Ross does a good job criticizing Lawrence Krauss, and that's a program coming up. Uh, they're old earth, but they're not theistic evolutionists. So there's like at least three. There's different types, but there's at least three so-called young earth creation, although 10,000 years is not really that young to me, but young earth creationists, old earth creationists, and then theistic evolutionists. And the third position, I'm, I'm talking more to the audience because people are asking, what's Biologos? 
uh, or I guess I say BioLogos, but BioLogos is a theistic evolution organization. That God used evolution, yes. essentially. Yeah, that, that was the yeah. mechanism by which God created was via evolution. So it's not That's selling out. That's Earth. a sellout. Yeah, to me that's sellout. That's that's false doctrine. That's that's not cool. And they, exactly. They got a lot of academics like Francis Collins who wrote uh, mm -hmm. the language of God, I think it was called uh, about the DNA. Um, he's mm -hmm. he's uh, he's the one who did the human genome project. Um, he's done some dope stuff in other areas, but he he's part of BioLogos. Um, uh, Peter um, oh, why did I just forget his last name? He used to be at Westminster. He's an Old Testament profess professor until it came out that um, he was a theistic evolutionist. Westminster let him go, and now he, he writes a lot on that. He's over there. And one guy that I was real sad to see be affiliated with BioLogos was actually Bruce Waltke. He's uh, sort of the dean of Old Testament evangelical scholars, has some amazing stuff on the Old Testament, but yet is pretty pretty tight on holding to an evolutionary model of origins and um and um that's just so it's a mixture of old testament scholars and and scientists by and large and they promote theistic evolution by giving their model but also by criticizing the young earth creationists and even the old earth creationists and so that's Come what on now is. that's what ain't nobody is. got it. As the old adage goes, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> by, the way, by the way, we got people in the live chat promoting your Patreon. Can you guys talk a little about your ministry here before we talk about this last song and talk about Patreon and, and supporting and stuff like that? Because uh, I do hope to get you guys a – maybe get you guys some more Patreon uh, supporters out of this whole uh, interview. Yeah, our Patreon, man, I, I really do hope to build it more. It's been difficult because Mike and I – we have to do so much, you know, to, to, to make things work. And I we haven't been able to. Our goal is to really make our Patreon a, a, a resource where we can convene. But we have very few at this point. You know what I mean, and the work we're doing, I think we, we do need support. So if you can join us on Patreon, ten dollars a month, um, it'll enable us to spend more time and, and do what we, you know, do what we want to do, which is encourage our supporters, provide exclusive material for them, fellowship with them. Right, bro? Right. I mean, it's tough. I'm going to say this. Uh, for, for doing this for so long, we, we don't make money from this. I'm just being real honest. I, I work a job, you know, and, and uh, it's tough. What keeps me going and, and writing and still doing music after all these years is just my love for the music and the culture. And then also my love, well, my love for the Lord first. But with regards to uh, the, the urgency, the passion that I have to see people come to know. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, but yeah, if, if anyone's yeah. able to help us out, that would be great. That would be a blessing. You got at least one new one. Lily R says, I just supported them on Patreon. So that's awesome. Praise God. We appreciate Thank that. You. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. So um, within that, um, the only song that is a bit different, although I understand why it can tie in in a minute here, that's a little bit different is a song that is sort of about eschatology. Let's talk about that song called The Millennium. And... Um, then um then we're gonna drop some verses and I, okay and usually i do a freestyle at the end where i throw on a beat and then a freestyle but i'm thinking today maybe we can just go back and forth dropping acapellas so everybody get your acapellas ready okay right. uh, so uh, from the album from the album yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not freestyles no freestyles <laughs> no freestyles okay bet, well, let's bet. talk about the millennium uh, that you were saying you thought that might be the most controversial song yeah and, the album. But, and i don't want people to focus on the uh, so millennium is a it is about it does have an eschatological bit but i think no matter what your eschatological belief is you should be able to amen the overall premise of this song so in my study of the early church fathers like the first century you know uh group of believers like hippolytus and you know those who came shortly after john um irenaeus polycarp uh clement some of the earlier writings you know that that, that existed you know in, in the you know the first a uh, hundred years after Jesus. You find this tradition and you even find it, actually the first time I heard about this tradition was in the rabbinic sources, not in the early church. I was surprised to find it in the early church writings because the rabbis and the early church uh, rarely agreed on anything, but they but they all said this. So there's, there was this tradition, and since the album is about creation, I thought it would tie in. There's this tradition that when God created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh, that in so doing, he created a template for human history. So 
in, in the scriptures, God had appointed times, feasts, that he wanted Israel to observe. And one of the Hebrew words used for them is mikra, which means appointed time, right? And we know that when Jesus came, he fulfilled certain things on those days. He died on Passover. Passover was a feast given to Israel prior to Jesus. It was called a mikra, an appointed time. So the Passover lamb, the blood was on the door. When God saw the blood of the lamb, he passed over that home. Jesus comes, however many you know, 1600 or whatever years later as the Lamb of God. And he dies on Passover, not around Passover, not, you know, uh, in the spirit of Passover. He dies on Passover. He raises on first fruits. And then the, the, the Holy Spirit is given on the feast of uh, Shavuot or Pentecost, which is basically a commemoration of the giving of the law. And then the Lord gives the spirit. And instead of 3,000 dying, like in the Old Testament, when the, the, the law was given because of their disobedience, 3,000 are saved. So you see all these parallels. And you see how when God gave these appointed times, it's pointing to something, right? So this tradition that you find in rabbinic sources and the early the rabbis trace it back. And some of these are pre-Jesus uh, rabbi. They, 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 they were writing before the time of Jesus. They trace it back according to their tradition anyway. I can't vouch for it, but they say that this comes from the school of Elijah, the prophet. So they believe that for every day of creation, they believed in literal days, that there would be a thousand years of human history. And they, they use the scripture that a day unto the Lord is a thousand years, right? And they believe that the Sabbath was an emblem or a shadow or a type of a future millennium after six days or 6,000 years unto the Lord, six days unto the Lord, 6,000 years, there would be a seventh day, a millennium in which God alone would rule over creation and peace and harmony would once again be restored to humanity and to all of creation. You find this reiterated by some of the early church fathers. Um, one that comes to mind, I believe it was, uh, well, Clement is an early early church writing. I mean, these aren't author you know, authoritative in the uh, sense right. of scripture, but but it's just it's showing you the backdrop that I believe John was writing in, right? Um, uh, Irenaeus, I believe, uh, reiterates the idea of a, of a thousand years being kind of uh, the fulfillment of the Sabbath. Um, Hippolytus, um, and this was a very common view. So so I, I I posit the idea, and and by the way, the rabbis broke it up into three sets of two thousand years, and this is actually an effective. I've used this when witnessing witnessing to Orthodox Jews. Um, this tradition. They believe that there would be 2,000 years from Adam to the Torah, and they count Torah as beginning when Abraham was called. So they said there are 2,000 years from the beginning, from Adam to Torah, and then 2,000 years of Torah, and then 2,000 years of Messiah. This was the rabbinic tradition before Jesus. What's interesting uh, vocab is that after 2,000 years had passed from the time of Abraham and the Messiah hadn't come, in rabbinic tradition, you'll find the rabbis debating, why didn't the Messiah come when he was supposed to come? It was supposed to be two days from the fall to Abraham and then two days from Abraham until Messiah. And the, the way they reasoned it was that because of Israel's sins, the Messiah has delayed his coming. But we as believers look at that and say, actually, that's a pretty good layout. Like, that's it. 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. It, it works. So I've used that to share with, with Orthodox Jews and say, hey, your own rabbis predicted that the Messiah would come 2,000 years after Abraham. So, I mean, you don't have to hold to that theory. This was, I will say this, in modern theological circles, we're quick to call people her heretics. Um, I think heretical things are things that run against uh, absolute doctrine that, that that is clear you deny the trinity you deny the deity of you know like those things are, aren't up for debate but this was held by the disciples of john this these were reiterated by the early church you know some of the earliest eschatology we have from the early church fathers they believe this so whether it's wrong or right it doesn't make you a heretic but the reason i bring it up isn't to say you have to believe this because it is a theory the reason i bring this up vocab is to say that the sabbath and the six days of creation is a picture of man's rule, right? Since, like since the fall, man has been trying to run the world his way and it's brought death and curse. But there's a day coming in which God's Messiah will reign. So the, the overall message of the song is that in Jesus, we find the fulfillment of the seventh day. The Sabbath has its fulfillment in the person of Jesus, the Messiah. He is our rest. Um, and ultimately pointing ahead, there will be a day in which God's rest will rule over the earth. Whether that's the way, the same scheme 
that you find in the rabbinic sources and in the early church, whether they were wrong or right about like the exact, you know, it's it's not a it's not a mathematical equation to pinpoint the day or the hour. But but I think the overall theme that that in Messiah we find rest and he his his return will be rest for all of creation is is something that I think every believer, no matter what your eschatology is, we can all amen. Is the theory so. that Christ is likely to return during the Feast of Trumpets part of that? Uh, not necessarily. That's not. Uh, that that's not really. Uh, that's a separate thing. That's a theory based on again, and that's something I'm not real. I'm not real dogmatic about. But I will say, based on Jesus' first coming, he did do things on those feast days, and those were the spring feasts. He fulfilled them, and this isn't up for debate. All the gospels tell us Jesus died on Passover. Right, right. Gave the whole. He rose on the first day of the week following Passover, which would have been first fruits, Bikurim, and that he gave the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Those weren't accidental dates. That stuff didn't just happen by accident. He was right. purposefully fulfilling. So then there's a second group of feasts known as the Fall Feast, starting with the Feast of Trumpets, right? And then you have Yom Kippur and then the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. And I believe that they will be fulfilled in his second coming because he laid a pattern. You know what I'm saying? Like he laid a pattern with his first coming. He's going to finish what he started. And, um, and and I believe the Sabbath is a... It's also called a mikra in a point of time. And I believe the Sabbath is also um, a, a something that we that will have its fulfillment in Messiah and Christ's second coming. We will experience rest. The entire creation will be under the rest of God at his second coming. My favorite part yeah. in that song is when the shofar comes in. Ah, uh, yeah. I was like, oh, Thanks, yeah. Thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, but you guys, this album has, uh, it's artistic as far as, um, the the actual production, you know, it's got a lot going on. It's musical, but then it's jumping, you know, has like some good instrumentation going on with, uh, I mean, I don't know how to describe it other than because I, I hear the bass lines popping out sometimes, almost like, you know, f- funky grooves are in there. You hear sometimes. That's that Columbus, you know, yeah. Columbus, like, oh, that, that heavy bass. Somebody asked about um, Amazon, and just to clarify, it will be on Amazon. One of the reasons we're, we're kind of laying it out in phases um, we, 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 we're trying to encourage God's people to support, I, I believe a project that's really important. And some of these like Amazon prime and some of these other outlets will stream your music for free. Mm-hmm. And that's great. We want people to hear it, but at the same time, like, you know, um, it, it's kind of a shame in, in Christian music, some of the fluffiest pointless, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying a lot of fluffy music gets support. It has no real value. A lot of it, you know, is this droney, rep- repetitive, and and it's not saying anything. You know, the hymns were so rich, right? right. And, and then you have artists like Keith Green, whose music was theologically sound and rich. Um, and, and in today's age, we have people putting out good good stuff, and we want to encourage believers. Not that the guy who's the person who's asking about Amazon wants to stream it for free, but I'm just like explaining like we're trying to encourage people to either go to Wrath and Grace or go to iTunes. And then we're going to start streaming it soon, but we want to encourage God's people like to actually support the album, buy it, be blessed by it, tell other people about it, and then you know we will start streaming it. Because the artist gets like yeah. a fraction of a penny for each stream; it's pretty yeah. uh, inconsequential. Um, and that's why you got guys like Shylin that are you know on Patreon now as well. So yeah. you know this is a dope album though. Then when it comes to the lyrics, I mean um, you know. They're definitely flowing, so you can kind of groove with it. But at the same time, the amount of words and word play in there, you know, uh, the in relationship with the song about the heart and the blood, it's pretty dope. You got that line, it's blood in, blood out, but it's blood in, blood out, bangs, but it's not a gang thing. Or how was the line? This is what was it exactly? That was a dope line, though. I'm trying to remember exactly. How yeah, it was. blood in, blood out when it bangs, but not a gang. Yeah. yeah I mean, this is <laughs> There's just a lot of <laughs> clever stuff like that. When you listen, you're like, oh, and you learn words, you know, occipital. Like, oh, okay, remember, got to put that. In. <laughs> so, I mean, it's 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 taking it, it's getting it's getting it in. So this is a real, real unique project that I'm really encouraging people to pick up. And I think people that are watching this get it. You know, we care about engaging the culture. We care about apologetics. We care about, man, we care about art. You know, we care about high quality right. creativity, and that's the kind of stuff you yeah. guys are doing. And I think it's, I think it's real fresh. So much, much love on that tip. Let's do um, final thoughts. What you're hoping for this album? You know, uh, something that you didn't get get out that you want to say, Mike. 
you know, you've been doing this for a minute, and it's uh, again, congratulations on the new album. What are your hopes Thanks. and dreams for this, man? What are you What are you hoping to see, man, as you go forward? Because I may be the first, but I hope I'm the smallest platform, and I hope you guys just elevate after that. So, what are you What are you hoping, man? Praise God, yeah. I would just uh, I always say this, but especially with this project, I really encourage believers to realize the days that we're in, that these are serious times that we're living in. And uh, we're, there's a culture war. There's a very serious culture war going on right now. Uh, and we need to really wake up to what's happening and really, uh, what's the word I'm trying to find? Preach I, the I gospel, guess. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about as far as really grasp and understand and, and, and know the Lord and, and, yeah. and share our faith and be Amen. proactive. Um, with regards to what we're up against in, in this world and, and know that the days are, are, are evil um, and that we're, we're called to be a light in the midst of darkness. The God, and I want to say this, the God that we serve is so real and he's so near. And I hope that as you listen to this project, that you really grab just how awesome he truly is and that it causes you. Actually, I saw a few comments that really encouraged me. I'm like, good, I'm getting it across. Yeah. People want to worship God. They want to worship him after listening to to, to the, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, what we're, what we're describing. And it's not even worship music stuff that you would necessarily hear when you go into a church or, you know, into a congregation. It's, it's, we're just describing them. And like Tony said, just like the hymn books of old, you know, we're, we're pointing at him. We're singing about him. We're talking about how awesome he is and we're using creation to do it, to do it. So it's, we, we pray that you're blessed in that sense and that we, we, we equip believers to, to defend the faith. Amen. Yeah. Curtis Allen says cross examine baby. Is oh that, yeah. Is yeah. that is that the Curtis Allen? Absolutely. That's Kurt Kennedy. And what? me and him are doing a uh, we're doing a podcast. We had our first episode called Cross Examine. Every Friday, I believe we're gonna be doing it. We had our first episode. We're gonna be doing more episodes in the future. Yes, the Kurt Kennedy, the Kurt Allen. Wow. Super talented brother. He's also also on Wrath and Grace. And I want to encourage so so real quick, I just want to say, bro, that's it. Mike. You hit the nail on the head. That's it. Like, this is a culture war. This is a spiritual war. It's not time to punk out. Um, right. And this album is needed because so much of the debate we're having about the sanctity of life, about gender. I mean, like, the very first thing that God makes clear in Genesis, even before a baby is born, right, is that he made them male and female. Everything, Genesis is under attack. But the foundation mm -hmm. of scripture. Everything about it. Sheets. Every yes. little verse is literally under yes. attack. Yeah, yeah, very, right? The first and the beginning, the Genesis, is under attack. So this album is is important because the foundational, like, before we can even debate these things, if we're talking to people who believe we're here by accident and that random chance created the universe, how can I get them to see that life has value, that a baby shouldn't be aborted, right? I can't have that discussion until I first, uh, uh, until we first establish that we that we are made in God's image, that His fingerprints are all over everything, and that we will give an account to Him. So that's the purpose of this album, like in this culture war, in this debate, to remember that God in the beginning, God. So that's it. And Mike, you hit the nail on the head. But yeah, so Wrath and Grace support Wrath and Grace. Buy the T-shirt too. Go to wrathandgrace.com. We have an Origins T-shirt with a thumbprint, the fingerprint from the album, but the lyrics are in the fingerprint. So it's a really cool nice, design. Like, nice. you get it. The lyrics. There's lyrics from some some of Mike's verses, some of mine, with the uh, and uh, uh, Day or Imago Day, mm -hmm. however it's pronounced. Uh, the day, image yep. of God. Yeah, that's that's the whole concept here uh, of the shirt. It's a super super dope shirt. Um, and then yeah, uh, support brothers like Kurt Kennedy and the other Wrath and Grace. You know, Lamp Mode. Uh, it was a great run, but unfortunately, you know, the time has come. Mm -hmm. The doors have, have kind of, you know, are closing in the process or have closed. And I think Wrath and Grace is really carrying that mantle of of solid music for his glory, lyrical theology, and, and even more than that. But like resources beyond just music, but books and, you know, uh, you know, it's going to it's it's expansive. And God is God is allowing us to do this. So can um, I just say one more thing? I'm yeah. sorry. I just want to say this, too, with regards to. Our, our attitude, even with rap music towards hip hop music, this kind of thing. I've always looked at rap music almost like a something that should be uh, an art that that should be put up on a pedestal because there's no other form of music that you can actually give a sermon on or give a talk through and have fun at the same time. I really love it in that sense. 
Um, but I would say with a project like this, this is one of those kind of things where we're trying to really establish that rap music can be used like an art museum. Um, I know I use kind of weird words, but there's no other word to, to ex explain it. I believe that stuff like this can be timeless and that it can, it, ex it can go beyond generations, you know? Um, so in a sense, what we're doing is something even bigger than just rap. Um, it's, it's like we're, we're, we're trying to show you that this art form can be used to create a beautiful picture of, of life and God's creation. So there's all these things that you're going to hear when you listen to this album. We're praying that, you know, and even if you pick it up, tell other people about it. Tell other people that you know about it. Tell them, encourage them to check it out. So, you know. Awesome, man. Well, I'm excited. We got some great comments and all of that. But guys, I think it's about that time. Now, look, I'm a retired MC, but check this out, man. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> if we're going to drop acapellas, written verses... Maybe I can go and set the bar low, and then you guys can come and clean it up. Oh, go ahead. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, that's so? it. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Rocat is the first brother that put me on to do a verse on an actual song. Why are you going to take Remember that? Yeah. First, it was your compilation. I never recorded before. Then, Liar Lunatic, he let me come into his spot, put down my vocals, and from there, I was in love. I was in love with being in the studio after that. In so. my mom's <laughs> basement. Yeah. <laughs> and bro, listen, right. I, I owe you an apology. I'm sorry. That was my first recording I ever did in my life. I literally had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> it sounded great to us, man, at the time. I, it was I, well I, received. No, that song was well received. It really was. Nah, I'm, that, glad, that, I'm glad it was. Some people still call it a classic, but as far as the audio side, I literally was guessing on levers, bro. I'm, I'm telling you, it was my first song I ever recorded. <laughs> I recorded yeah, you yeah. guys on that that four track before I recorded myself. So, anyways, I'm glad it worked out though. That's awesome, man. This is yeah, exciting. Awesome. This is exciting, man. All right, That's, so uh, yeah. so Tony, you have a couple. You got some verses from the album. I, I got a verse. I, I, I'm not gonna. I'll mess up if I do too much. I haven't really studied the album as much. You know, I kind of recorded it and didn't want to hear too much of it. Uh, so 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 I'm gonna keep it safe. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to do too much because then I'll I'll embarrass myself. But I got a verse. I got a verse that I think I can spit. You got something, bro? That's kind of like that's, yeah. That's you do? Right. yeah. Yeah yeah. So I'll go so first, and then Mike, and then Tony, and let's see how's that sound. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So so the thing is, you guys know, uh, in the super chat, you guys know what we're doing. This one's a little bit different though. I'm gonna do some writings I've got sort of on archive to try to fit with the theme. All right, here we go. Yeah. Ah. Ah, uh, all right, ah, uh, Genesis 1, God speaks revelation, Amago Dei, the peak of creation. This means that man was made in God's image, not vegetation, not maize, not spinach, more than a plant or a mere animal. He's not a robot, he's not mechanical, ha, follicles, cuticles, all beautiful, ha, musical, unusual, all beautiful. They are made by the God who is inscrutable. He says I formed you with a job to do. See, God is the shaper of our toes. In our heart, he he is the soul of our innermost parts. Now peep the text and examine it. We're animate, not an animate, and we're not just mere matter of emotion. We're not just mere data from emotions destined to die from a sun that's roasting. In the meantime, we stay coasting. Nah, see, glorious ruin, human in his likeness, made to relate and love what's righteous. Amen. Amen. <laughs> ah, Mike. <laughs> Mike, you got next, bro. You want me to? You want me to get this? Uh, yeah, you go next, bro. Okay. Fine tuning is the delicate balance of initial conditions that allow for life's existence. For instance, our distance from the sun is optimal. Shifted a few inches, and life wouldn't be possible. We'd burn or we'd freeze from frigid or fervent degrees and the seas would turn into ice or burn into steam. The sun's rays merge with the trees converting CO2. We, we, ah, the, the sun's rays merge, into, merge with the trees converting CO2 we release into oxygen we can breathe. I'm back, y'all. And the force that binds protons and neutrons we aren't supposed to find by accident apart from an omnipotent mind. Gravity, mass, and energy, those align perfectly. And the planetary spin built with a tilt, the margin forever very thin. Yeah, it's not an accident, a secondary whim. It's immaculate, he's accurate, and none compare to him. From the birds in flight whom whistle and recite tunes to the night's moon and the sun at high noon. 
The lilies in the light bloom as the ants collaborate to form the dirt into a nice dune. Rainfall, storm clouds in the sky loom. Ripe fruits, vines prune, celebrate with wine soon. Bride and the bridegroom, baby in the wife's womb. He holds it all together, keeping it fine-tuned. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. All right. Atheist mock design claiming it's make-believe. My topic is the eye making it plain to see. Many take it for granted, yet something to behold. How we take in the planet, the window to the soul. The color part of the eye, that's what the iris is. The pupil dilates depending how much light there is. Complex and intricate, its design is so baffling. Even Darwin admitted the human eye is no accident. Binocular vision that moves together in unison. Automatic focus without the use of a zoom in lens. Pushing out nutrients where the aqueous humor is. Dispersing a fluid that acts as natural lubricant. The optic nerve looks like a gigantic vein. The fibers are made. This connects the eye to your brain. The retina is designed like a ring, able to shine what we've seen upside down while projecting light to a screen. Outside the eye, a design is exquisite. That's comprised of two tendons. Move your head from side to side. It stabilizes the image. Coincides with your vision as your eyes adjust and turn. The cornea was built to shield your eyes from dust and germs. Lacrimal gland disposes overflowing tears that go within your nose or past your eyelids. And now with this, I close. We are fashion with purpose. There's a mass of this working. And like you cut your cornea, I ain't even scratched Scratch the, the surface. <laughs> yeah. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> well, I got one more, y'all. I got one more. If go you got one more after this, you can bring it because people are feeling it. Ah. Uh oh. <laughs> everything that exists must have had a beginning. But how do we get the beginning to begin its own beginning? There's no winning. And thus there is an uncaused first cause who needs no beginning, this first cause we call God. No pause in existence in any instance, he spoke in Genesis, let there be his sentence, and in an instant he made Darwinian finches. But by chapter 3 we sin needing repentance. And since the fall, we've all begotten top ear. We want to reject the God so we can play the top bill. Yet long for the transcendence to try and fill. Now, I will do in truth, so let me say this to you. If there's really no God, it really don't matter what you really do. Because the sun will burst first, the earth will die, your heat, death. It's red and black and it's smacked, there's nothing left. Check this, that, and ask, what's the point of my breath? Get nothing but a vapor, living now, but dying later. But my say this circumscribe the equator. A divine design needs a wise divine type creator. It's a caper, but the make it and say, see you later. To the stuff that he made, now peep the intricate layers. Which are conditions necessary for life? There's over a hundred and they're all just right. What's it like to wish that there is no God, but you want to be God so hard, but it's so very hard to deny this truth that's all around you. We Romans chapter 1 and chapter 2, 2. Become our own God. That's what we want to do. Psalm 14, 2. The philosophy of fools, man. Ooh, yeah. Check it. You guys the got earth is the Lord's. Yo, the earth hey. is the Lord's and the fullness in it. I'm here to remind the world and every fool that's in it. He is the God of the universe who reigned. Before all, he was the universal king. Yeah. He's thrice holy, white robe, light glow, so bright you could see him with your eyes closed in a blindfold. Mm. The Father, Word, and the Spirit, all glorious. Soundtrack is heavenly chorus is singing, it was good. Every symbol and shape, it was his to create. You heard it for his glory, not merely a simple mistake to pervert it. Don't try jacking his intellectual property for your occult uses, just foes he handles them properly. Yo, somebody tell the Masons and Illuminists and Luciferians to worship Satan is just ludicrous. Because he's a part of creation like a human is. One day he'll see the flames for his hubris. And don't forget, God invented the rainbow too. Let me tell you what you ain't going to do. You will not be able to snatch the symbol of the covenant of grace, drag it through the mud and the waste, and thinking you could rub it in his face. Give that back along with it. Every good thing from the Lord that y'all twisted, like goat horns, the eye, sex, and triangles, taking it back when he comes to flex with bright angels. That's right. Nice. You got one more, salt water women. But God in his infinite wisdom knew for mankind fresh water is essential for living. The lakes and the ice evaporate to the heights. He designed the atmosphere as a filtration device with water weighing a ton and salt causing a danger. By drawing rays from the sun, he dissolves this into vapor. As vapor goes up for miles, this formulates into clouds, impurity separating, deposits are breaking down. Polar winds are rolling in over mountains and peaks. Cold conditions are soaking in, creating water that's sweet. This condenses into liquid, preparing for its dissension. The moment until it drops, it's held up by air suspension. The concept is complex and unthinkable. The filtration process to make it drinkable. 
The next time the rain's hit in your face, just remember my rhyme. Just remember my rhyme. Take heed to my rhyme. And start, start giving, giving them, them praise. praise. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> One more. Ah, I think a thought, but I forgot what for. Not you, oh Lord, you know me evermore. You hold me close and cover my soul. You know my road, so where shall I go? She, oh, I flow back up with the wings. You all there wear in the bright morning. I stand in the plan of a strong right hand. You knit me together, and indeed I am. Wonderful work, so fearfully made. My frame was hidden in the womb I laid. I knit and woke. But kept the secret unformed yet you knew when peeped it believe it your book was written You know me know me know me and I was not hidden you are dust plus life. I trust in Christ Psalm 139 pro-life. That's right Zia <laughs> Ah, bro. Should I do one more mic? What yes. Do you yes. All right <laughs> I'm giving the whole album. Okay, yo, Last I'm one. saved been arrayed in the best vesture by his grace for the less pressure Cause in the days of yester, I used to let the stress fester, but he died for my peace. I'm blessed extra. Yeah, it feels good to be here with a purpose. Real view is more deep than appears on the surface. If random chance acting on stardust caused us, then it's all just worthless and we're in a circus. A bunch of primates playing high stakes, competing to eat, sleep, and hydrate and find mates. Morality's a construct, a formality to regulate our conduct. So live it up. Time is so fleeting. It's cruel and abrupt, and life has no meaning. Uh-uh. You're no accident. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. It's accurate more than another cliche. God's image you don't want to degrade. It's so precious. He is the foundation of human worth, and everything that he made is so excellent. Just look at the fine-tuning of the universe. Uh Yo, the cosmic laws of laws, ah, the cosmic laws of logic, obvious to atheists and all agnostics, even before it was written in the law and prophets, all creation bore witness that God is awesome. Nice. Yeah. What's up, Mike? You got one more, bro? Uh, you guys, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta confess. When I look at the heavens and consider his handiwork, what he's done on the planet Earth with the animals, plants, and birds, putting planets in orbit, setting stars in the courses. Handling animate forces and causing the land to flourish is more than I can imagine. Our mortal minds couldn't fathom. He's organizing an atom, pouring life in the atom. You look at his creation thinking it's all evolving. I see it and think amazing. Truly, my God, is awesome. From the microscopic to the tiny objects to the fiery flying comets in the giant cosmos, from the highest heights to the deep abyss, all around us are the findings of his fingerprints. If we lived a thousand years, we would be remiss. If we forget, that he exists. Those who claim to be wise really need to quit because this is an iceberg and you only see the tip. Oh, shoot, man, it's done. I gotta confess. I gotta confess. I read everything. <laughs> I got my lyrics out, yo. I had to read it, y'all. No, that's all right. <laughs> Yo, man, is this is no, I got one more. I'm gonna close it off. Oh, okay, Isaiah 42, where I read it, expanse of the heavens, you have spread it. Let there be the words, ah, you have said it. I all praise your power, give you credit. We we see you clearly, can't forget it. See, the spirit gave life, and now I get it. My, my soul craved you, you have fed it. I study your truth, no cut, no edit. So, who made the globe and the snows and the trees, and who made the cold and the gold in the season who made the plant and the ant and the dirt I, who made the man laid the plan for the earth the cloud and the ground and the bird and the hurt look up look down and see his word ha, triune god yes he is the one the father did it with a spirit spirit and a son done yes <laughs> yes okay listen, bro you still sound exactly like the same bro you have not <laughs> You sound awesome, bro. It's like you haven't aged at all. As far as you know, what I'm saying? you sound great. Damn, you shouldn't stop. You should keep going. You Man, keep going. I would love to, but this guy is yeah. semi-retired because of life. But yeah. uh, <laughs> one day, I'll get back in the saddle for that grand finale okay. album. One day, yeah. yeah. Probably, probably by that time, my sons will be rapping. I'll, I'll do like a joint collab with uh, one of my sons. <laughs> <laughs> Nah. That dope, hey, that's dope, man. So, hey, you guys got the final word. This is a great way to go out. This is blazing. This is a awesome way to end this. You guys are good sports too. Uh, final words is uh, on y'all, man. Whatever, whatever you want to say is uh, we close out this 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 fun and informative show. Thank you. Yeah, guys, uh, look out for the album. Please, you know, pick it up, check it out. We appreciate everyone that tuned in tonight, 
and we love the support. We appreciate everyone showing love. And Vocab, we really thank you, bro, for having us on your show and for giving us a platform to, to promote. And we love you, bro. You, you mean a whole lot to me and Tony. So, appreciate shalom. That, appreciate that, man. I, I just want to say I, 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 I echo my brother's sentiments. Guys, listeners, cling to the Lord. Amen. If you're going through tem- moments of temptation, discouragement, remember that the same God who numbers the hairs on your head, who made your eye, who made your heart, who keeps your heart beating, who uh, who basically manages the entire universe without our thinking about it, that that God, he loves you, he hears you, and in the person of his son, he died to save sinners. Amen. And and these days, do not let go. You cling to his garment with all that you have, man. Amen. Praise Amen. God. And I'm going to yes. put a link to, to the um, the videos and the promos at the end of this video. So there will be links right there as well as in the description box. With that, hey, this is super dope. You guys killed it. Uh, I'm excited <laughs> to see you know how this does. Mike and Tony, thanks for joining Street Apologist Live. Grace and peace. All right. Peace, peace. out, y'all. Shalom. Dope, 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 dope. <laughs>